Meet Jacob, a 32-year-old refugee from South Sudan living in Bidi Bidi Refugee Camp, the world's second largest refugee settlement. Uganda is one of the most vulnerable countries in the world to climate change. Despite this vulnerability, Uganda has welcomed over 1.4 million refugees from several countries, including South Sudan, DRC, and Burundi, one of the highest in the world. High levels of poverty among the refugee population and host communities mean that they, like Ugandans, are vulnerable to climate shocks and extreme weather events. As COP26 president, the UK is committed to helping strengthen adaptation and resilience to the effects of climate change, particularly on the most vulnerable. The UK launched the Adaptation Action Coalition to turn international political commitments into on-the-ground support for vulnerable communities. In Bidibidi Refugee Settlement Camp, the UK, in partnership with Halebury Youth Trust and Mercy Corps, started training young people in making interlocking, stabilized soil bricks, considered high-quality, low-cost and environmentally friendly construction technology. Interlocking stabilized soil blocks is actually better because those band bricks they take long time in construction. They are more costly in terms of construction because they demand more cement in construction because they need more water. They also need trees to be cut for burning them. Compared to this interlocking stable soil blocks, we get materials from the maram. We mix with the, the cement and the sand and the sprinkled water. We make that the interlocking stable soil blocks from it. We, we, we are environmental friendly because we don't use trees for burning them. We don't burn them. And in construction, they are a bit faster because we only interlock them. By using a locally produced, climate-friendly product, people's incomes are supported. 26 youth, 20 refugees from South Sudan and 6 Ugandans have been trained. The trained youth have been involved in the construction of 10 rooftop rainwater harvesting tanks, 7 in schools and 3 in health centres, to solve water scarcity in the community. Two innovation centres were also built, helping provide the space for community meetings and training. In constructing the two centres, a total of 19 tonnes of wood was saved. And a primary school is being rebuilt, from grass-thatched classrooms lacking ventilation to three well-ventilated and spacious classroom blocks. I really thank the government of the UK, in collaboration with the Mascops and the Hillbury Youth Trust, for training me to be able to help the community inside the refugee settlement. The money that they are, they are giving me, I'm able to pay my kids in a better school and even changing the diet of my family. So here they're also training me to be a manager of managing a site of this kind, to become an engineer in the future so that I also teach others to become like me. And even up to maybe in South Sudan when we shall be back, I wish also to introduce this technology there so that we reserve our, our, our environment for future use. Through innovative projects like this and UK leadership in the lead up to COP26, they help build the resilience of vulnerable people across the world to the effects of climate change.